All right, so we've done all of the dehydration stuff with sulfuric acid and heat, um, but it turns out that in organic chemistry, we have a lot of specialty reagents. And this is the first one you're gonna learn about, but from here on throughout organic chemistry one and almost all, like a lot of organic chemistry two, there'll be a specific reagent that does one thing or another. Um, and the first one we're learning about today is called POCl3. So phosphorus with an oxygen and three chlorines, you can see the structure right there. Um, and it's easiest to remember what they do if you really think about how they work mechanistically. So what happens with the electron movement? Um, and as I've said time and time again, organic chemistry is best learned by just thinking about negatives flowing to positives and the ball rolling downhill. So high energy to low energy. Um, the first thing we want to ask about then is, well, in POCl3, what is the most electron poor atom? So how would you figure that out? Take out your periodic table. You have one in your textbook. You also have the internet. And give me an answer to that. So whoop, you pause the video. You did that. Looked it up. You're back. Uh, phosphorus is the most electron poor of all of the atoms in POCl3. So um, if this is our electrophilic component, um, the most partially negative thing over here is going to add to that most partially positive atom on the POCl3. And that's what happens. We have the oxygen, which we know is the most electron rich species over here. It is taking its electrons and it's going to add them to POCl3. And kind of in an SN2 type of reaction here, um, as the oxygen adds, the chlorine atom is going to leave, um, which that produces a new bond between the oxygen and the phosphorus. Um, so I'm gonna draw that here. Um, we have our hydrogen there, we have the oxygen phosphorus bond. Now we have two chlorines on there and a double bond to the phosphorus, the positive charge still on that oxygen. We also have something else in this reaction that's new, but you're gonna see it a lot in organic chemistry one and two. It's called pyridine. Um, so this is pyridine, it's a weak base. So we know based on pKa values that Nitrogen, when it's neutral like this, is a weak base. It has a pair of electrons, and those electrons can pull off acidic protons. Um, we know that this oxygen is kind of in the form of hydronium ion, which is a strong acid. Um, so the first equivalent, and this XS means excess, so there's a lot of this pyridine around. The first equivalent is going to pull off that hydrogen to generate the neutral oxygen molecule. and we still have more of it around. And essentially, if we look at what products we have up there, we already have the leaving group. This is the leaving group. We have a good leaving group. We have a secondary um, secondary leaving group. And pyridine is a, is a moderately good base slash nucleophile. Um, so there's lots of it around, it's an excess, and that is going to allow us to have a E2 reaction, right? So a secondary leaving group, moderate to strong nucleophile slash base would be a bimolecular reaction. So pyridine would add in there, grab that hydrogen. We'd have the E2 mechanism occur, forming our alkene and our leaving group. And essentially here, I haven't drawn them in, but we have two equivalents of pyridine uh, that are protonated upon this reaction. Okay, so what else am I showing here? I say POCl3, POCl3 specialty reagent dehydrates via an blank type reaction. Um, we call this an E2 type reaction. Um, as far as how the dehydration occurs, we have a leaving group and the leaving group leaves is the same at the same time that the base deprotonates. So it's bimolecular in this last step. So we think of it kind of as an E2 type reaction. Um, and why do I call it a specialty reagent? Um, I'm really drawing, I'm tr I try to kind of organize things for you in, in, in this section. And it turns out that all the specialty reagents we're gonna learn about in this chapter, they all work through bimolecular mechanisms. Um, so if you, can, if you can recognize something as a specialty reagent, oh, that's a little weird. We haven't seen something like that before. It's going to be via a bimolecular reaction mechanism. Um, so that's what POCl, 
POCL3 is. That's what it does. Um, why do we need it? What's the point of it? Ooh, good question. We're going to talk about that right now. All right, why do we need POCL3? We already have other dehydration conditions, right? Sulfuric acid and heat dehydrates just fine. What's the point of this specialty reagent? Isn't it just something new to confuse us? No, it's really important. It's important to have multiple reagents to do different things because they might work by different mechanisms. Um, so it'd be best if you guys pause the video right now and predict these products. What's going to form? What are all the products going to be? Okay, you made a good go with that. That's great. Sulfuric acid and heat. What happens with a secondary alcohol? It goes by an E1 mechanism. So this is an E1 mechanism type. And what's going to happen there? Um, I'm going to talk through it. Hopefully you've already written out the mechanism. I really hope you've already done that. Um, this is going to protonate. It's going to be a good leaving group. The alcohol will leave. That would generate a secondary carbocation. Oh, it could be a tertiary carbocation if a hydride shift occurs. So a hydride shift would occur. We'd have a tertiary carbocation. Then we could form alkenes here or there. So the major products are going to be mixed between that product and this product. So not ideal, right? Organic chemists want to make things in very high yield. And here, we're splitting our yield between two major products. Um, so not the best. Uh, what about POCL3? What's special about that? It's a specialty reagent. All specialty reagents work by bimolecular mechanisms in this chapter. Um, so this would be an E2 type mechanism. What does that mean? Well, we're going to form the leaving group from the POCL3 reagent, and then the hydrides that are currently beta to that will be used to deprotonate. So this is a beta hydrogen, this is a beta hydrogen. Um, both of them could theoretically be deprotonated, but the one that forms the more stable product will be the major product. This one will form the tri-substituted alkene. So the major product with POCL3 and excess purity is going to be just this molecule. So while this is going to be a low yield because it's split between multiple products, this one is going to be a high yield because it's just one product. Um, so why, why is it nice to have this POCL3 with pyridine reagent? Because POCL3 dehydrates via a bimolecular mechanism. And why did this form multiple products? It formed multiple products because we had that carbocation rearrangement. And because POCL3 dehydrates via a bimolecular mechanism, no carbocation rearrangement can occur. So that's that's a really useful thing here to have both of these options. Um, also because this dehydrates by the bimolecular mechanism, it requires the anti-periplanar thing that we talked about extensively in chapter 8. So it turns out that if, if we're doing E2, it requires that antiperiplanar hydrogen, so that's going to make only one reaction pathway possible in some scenarios um, versus E1 having a big empty P orbital open. Um, you no longer need that antiperiplanar situation as much. So um, there are various reasons why POCL3 is a very useful reagent. Um, all right, on to the next step.